Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, let's see how we can handle iframes using Cypress. So first of all, let's understand what is iframe. Iframe elements are designed to allow you to embed other web documents into the current document. So in layman terms, we can say that we want to embed other third party contents into the current web page. Something like embedding Google Maps, Facebook or YouTube, right? So this is a real time use case. And in addition to that, a lot of the other applications like ServiceNow, generally we will see that you will be having a lot of the iframes. So how do we handle that using Cypress? And while we do the demo, we'll understand the use case of using the contents method from jQuery and what is its use case. And we'll also see how do we set up Chrome web security as false in case if you wanted to handle any of the cross origin frame, meaning if you wanted to use any of third party origin domain, we will go out of the domain. So out domain, then we'll be using Chrome web, we will be setting up Chrome web security as false. Let's see that. So for the purpose of our demo, I just put a placeholder test. We have been writing the same, pretty much same syntax. So I put it at the website here. This is my website. If you just run it now quickly, this will take us to the current web page. Right? So a lot of the time we will be tempted to just go write the test here. Let's say that the real time purpose, let's say that I want to just write something here. Right? So what we generally do, we just right click, go inspect it. And then when we inspect here, this will give us a couple of options. So as we can see, there's a body tag under that there is a P tag, paragraph tag. So here if you hover on it, I'll, I have an ID as this particular attribute, control F. And then if I put it here, because it is ID, we can put this hash symbol. So this means that it is locating one of one. This means that it is a unique element. So we may be tempted to just get this ID and then go back to Cypress and then say that cy.get and this is the locator and we'll be start typing something, right? So type is the method coming from Cypress and then we'll be passing the argument. So if I run it now, let's see what's happening. So it will launch the site, that's fine, but it is trying to get the element. So from, from a selector point of view, it looks genuine, it looks good because we were able to look at it. We were able to match one of one, which meaning that we are able to match this one, but still then Cypress is not able to handle it. Not only with the case of Cypress, even with Selenium, we will not be able to handle it if in case there is a frame. So if you're not able to handle any of the uh, web element using, you know, with the right uh, locators, obviously there is a reason to suspect that it could be under the frame. So that's when we're going to see that. If we just closely look at the application DOM, then if you hover on it now, so this is the body, on top of that there is an HTML and this is a document. So this document is embedded into the iframe. So that's what the whole frame is. So this entire content as you can see here, this has been sitting in the frame. So we need to find out to this, we need to find out, we need to find out a way to move to the frame first and then we'll try to interact with the element. So in Selenium, typically if there is a method switch to frame alert or window, then we'll be using it. If you wanted to come out of the window, then we'll to move to parent window and then default content. So there are quite a few methods coming from Selenium, but how Cypress handle that? So a lot of, uh, but as of the current version Cypress we are talking about, they do not have a direct API, something like type, click, get, contain. So they, they do not have an API. Maybe in future release, they will be releasing it. But for now, there's a workaround, right? So in order to navigate, in order to interact with any of the frame elements, we need to just look at locate the frame. So frame here refers to this ID. We can take this as an attribute, control F, control V, and this is an ID. Let's see that whether it is unique or not. We put the, because it's an ID, I'll put this an as symbol. So it is uniquely identifying it. So this is our frame ID. If we go back to a locator, now let's change this to here. So now we are, the our control is in the frame now, right? And in order to resolve it, because everything in Cypress, we have seen it, it is all promises. So we need order to resolve and work on a particular subject. Here subject refers to the current DOM element. So if you hover on the get method, and if you look at the method signature, whatever we see at the bottom last thing, this is the return. We can say it is a return type. Return type saying that Cypress chainable jQuery HTML element. So meaning this will return a DOM element. In order to work with the DOM element, we need to resolve it. 
So the way we can resolve it typically using the then method. Then function in JavaScript generally resolving it. It comes from a promise to resolve a promise, right? So then takes us a callback function and that function we can optionally store the element, right? Let's say that this is my iframe. So I can save it generally the syntax here would be convention here would be put the dollar symbol and then say this is the element. And then we can refer this element back whenever we want to interact with it. So now we are resolving this one. Now we are saving it as an iframe. So this is now the iframe is in the form of HTML document. Basically it's a jQuery document. So here if I say iframe dollar symbol iframe and then we can also use a lot of the jQuery methods. Like the way we have seen a lot of the method from selector side, we can also use a lot of method. The key important method here we need to be using if you wanted to interact with the iframes is contents. We put contents method. Basically it says that contents method is to get all the contents under the iframe. And this is not a Cypress command. It's our Cypress method. It is coming from jQuery. And once we put it, this will return all of the document. So whatever we are seeing here, for example, if we go back to the application and this is my iframe, we are currently here. And then this refers, this refers to the document. And this document has an HTML document, header, body, typically just like any other HTML document, DOM, right? So here, I, the control is in now document. So this is what the contents will give us. And within that, wherever we want to iterate, wherever we want to interact with an application uh, elements, we need to move there. So we'll be using a Cypress command here not Cypress command, this command, our same command like Cypress, we have a find command in uh, a jQuery, which will find a dissentant elements, meaning that any any document, anything under this document, we'll be able to find it. So in our context, here we need to find out, let's say that this is my document, it's an HTML, we have an head and this is a body. So this, this is a simple example, but in real time example, we may be having something lot more additional tags. So we want to locate a logical tag so that we can interact with it. But here the logical tag is the body tag. So I can locate the body tag either by body or using the ID because we are already into the frame, right? So we can use any other method. Let's go with the body. Let's say that I put the body because this will again take a tag as also a selector, valid selector. So body is my valid selector. This is very humming. So now if I hover on find, find is returning what? Let's see that find is returning jQuery HTML element. So I can save this as an element because I'm using already I have dissolved the promise. So now I can save this as an element. Let's for example, let's say this is a constant. Let's say this is my iframe element or iframe content. Now we got the content now. So basically we are just got the body of it to work with. And within the body, and if you wanted to convert any of the jQuery or HTML document or content into Cypress, basically in order to use any of the Cypress command, we will have to wrap it. So we'll use a method called cvoid.wrap. That basically means that any of the jQuery element, we'll be wrapping it into a Cypress so that we'll be using any of the Cypress method, right? So here our context, this is my HTML jQuery document and I'm just wrapping it out. So why I'm wrapping it? Because I want to apply something, because I want to interact with it, right? I, I'm just want to type something here. Because type doesn't come from, maybe I, jQuery may have a method to type it, but generally we will need to convert it back to Cypress so that we'll be able to change the test. Now here, if I put, because we'll be putting a lot of comments, I can also put optionally like this here. And this is my overall content, right? Now the another thing is we need to find we are already in the body and let's try to start typing it. If you put type and then say hello, let's see what's happening. If I run the test, let's go back and it's saying that cannot read property body of null. So looks like everything is right because we all got the content body find everything but looks like it's still not doing it, right? So it just goes back to the another general way. But in typical web automation, generally, whenever we are not able to interact with it or type with it, general idea to just go and click it and then type it. Let's see whether that method works. Because we already converted the jQuery or the HTML element into Cypress, uh, Cypress chainable command, we can apply any of the n number of methods, commands, right? 
Uh, so before I type, let me say that I want to just click on it. If I click and type, let's see whether what's happening. If I just run it now. So now we see that the hello is getting printed here. But it is embedding with the existing already a placeholder text. So I want to remove the text and then provide the hello one. So what we can do again, just let's go back and then we'll put clear. There's a clear method just like selenium. Because it will clear the content and click it and type it. If we go now, it says that hello. So this meaning that either we, before we typing, some of the application in real time, we have seen it because before we type it, general idea to just clear the text and then click on it. When we click on it, the control is there and then we can able to type it. Now, if I remove the clear one or remove the click one, this time also it will be work, able to work it. If I just save it now, Let's see that it is cleared and then typing it here. Did it type? Let's rerun it. Yes, it typed. Yeah. So this is the way we do that. So in addition to another way we will be using is even, even if you wanted to use other thing like the way we have seen in the previous video, we can also use within meaning that we will fix one of the element DOM element and then within the element we'll be able to scope Within the scope, we can able we will be able to interact with it. So we can limit that we are in the current frame and within the frame, we'll be able to do it. So if I save this test and run it, we will see pretty much the same behavior. So here the, the key point here is within and then will work similar way. We can get the particular element. We can scope and whatever element that we get, we can we will be able to interact with it. That's number one. Number two is Whenever we want to interact with the iframes, remember that we will be using the contents method from jQuery and finding a particular relevant method so that we will be able to apply that. So these two are the important lessons and I think with the help of, with the help of this workaround, you'll be able to handle any of the frames in the application. But what if the frame is coming from third party, something like Google Maps or anything else, that's when it comes to the cores, basically that it is a cross origin domain. So the domain name will be different than the current application domain. So in that case, what they suggest Cypress is we need to enable something in the cypress.json, which is our config file. So if you follow this schema, if you put the schema, we'll, we should be able to get this auto suggested. Just put a double colon because it's JSON. Let's say that this is my web security. So Chrome web security by default, it is true. We just go back Cypress, we go to settings and configuration. You see that Chrome web security is by default, it is true we need to false it, just make it as a false so that we should be able to interact with any of the third party applications. If we save it now, the settings would have changed. Settings would have changed to false and then we should be able to interact with any other third party. Right? So this is how we handle iframes in Cypress. And I hope that you find it useful. Thanks for watching.